sustainability is increasingly becoming one of the new battlegrounds for major international companies. No industry is more in the firing line than the paper industry because of the need to cut down trees to make paper. One of the world's biggest paper makers is Indonesian-based Asian pulp and paper and its global head of sustainability, Aida Greenbury, is visiting Australia at the moment. Aida Greenbury, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. We've just heard how palm oil companies in Indonesia are again illegally burning forests, uh, killing orangutans and other endangered species. The paper industry has also historically been involved in illegal deforestation. What guarantees can you give our viewers that the Indonesian paper industry has stopped illegal deforestation and in particular Asia pulp and paper? When you talk about legality, we have to refer to the framework that the Indonesian government already set up. Um, uh, recently, the Indonesian government um, just launched a new standard in legality for a timber legality assurance system, SVLK, and it has been rolled out probably um, earlier this year, and uh, their target to finalize the auditing uh, works and also the certification works by end of this year. And uh, we, we're, very, we're very proud of our system and we've been very supportive. And uh, just three, two or three days ago, APP's, my company, Asia Pulp and Paper, has actually finally uh, achieved the first certification in pulp and paper industry in Indonesia. But with the renewed uh, burning forest for palm oil in defiance of court orders in Indonesia for that to stop, doesn't that just show that the government isn't in control? Um, palm oil is under the agriculture uh, ministry and uh, burning is definitely an illegal activity. It's not, supposed to, it's not supposed to be done by any companies. Burning actually uh, uh, very closely associated with illegal um, and, and, and irresponsible, uh, unsustainable practices by uh, communities, some communities. Therefore, socialization, education is very, very important in Sumatra, in Kalimantan, in other remote areas in Indonesia to make sure that the local community does not practice slash and burn activities and also other unsustainable practices in while clearing the, the, the land to develop their crops. My understanding uh, is that in the recent past the French retailer Carrefour as well as the food maker Kraft have walked away from your company because of concerns over damage you're doing to the environment. That's not a good sustainability look though, is it? Oh, we, um, we don't really talk about commercial issues with our, about our customers, but it is important. It is uh, what our customers have done and also... Uh, but if they're expressing concerns about your, your handling of the environment, that is important, doesn't it? Absolutely important. That's why we uh, just recently, actually, on, in, in May and also on 5th of June, we restructure our procurement policies, also responsible uh, procurement guidelines within APP to make sure that we are uh, protecting high conservation value forest. We also are uh, respecting uh, the, the community and embracing free and prior informed consent. And also uh, we are also pledged to lead the research on high carbon stock in our operations. That way we, are confer uh, we, are, we, we make sure that our products are procured and also processed in a responsible manner. This, of course, uh, would have been, uh, wouldn't, we wouldn't have achieved it without the input from our customers and also civil societies in, in general. So is that code for saying your customers have forced you to change your ways? I, I wouldn't say it forcing. I would say that sustainability is being based on multi-stakeholder input. Our sustainability policy has to be based on input by our stakeholders. They can be customers, employees, communities, government. So customers is one of the very important stakeholders that we have to listen to. So our sustainability policy is a product created by our stakeholders. It's not a product created by us. That's, that's how we uh, created policies in our company. President Udiono wants Australia to become a top 10 trading partner with Indonesia. I think we're 13th at the moment. Can you see areas where trade could, could really be boosted between Australia and Indonesia? One of our affiliates uh, are investing in Australia uh, with, with, the, with the tissue converter and, and, and vice versa. But there are two things that both our governments need to do some work in terms of clarity of regulations and also transparency on how to invest in both countries. Those two need to be clarified as well. German Chancellor Angela Merkel is in Jakarta at the moment and uh, she's just signed a, a treaty with Indonesia which includes boosting trade. Is that a warning to Australian business that if they don't fill the void and get in quickly that, that businesses in other countries are more than happy to trade with Indonesia? 
Yes, probably. I don't know. I cannot really speak on behalf of Germany. But uh, I really think that Indonesia offers really good opportunities. Our people is close to 300 million people in populations in Indonesia. And, and our natural resources are very rich and everything else. So Indonesia represents really good opportunity that we don't really want Australia to miss it because Australia, <clears throat> of course, our, our closest neighbor and we don't want Australia to miss it you know, as opposed to Germany or other countries. What opportunities do you see in Australia for your company, Asian Pulp and Paper? There are several opportunities from from my perspective, from our perspective, of course, with the, with the production of, of tissue and, and paper products instead of, uh, instead of importing the material or, or, or products from Europe or from Brazil or from uh, Korea or, or somewhere, somewhere uh, further, I think Australia should really look into what's available and they're on their doorstep, which is from Indonesia. There are so many good things. I mean, it's cost efficiency and also on carbon. The closer your material is coming from, then of course the, the lower the carbon it would be, the carbon footprint I'm talking about. And also, um, it's, just, it's just really good. I mean, Indonesia is a new kit on the block in the uh, paper production. That means we are embracing new technology, so it's more energy efficiency and everything else. Emissions are much lower than importing the material or the, or the products from other countries in Europe or in America, for example. Aida Greenberry, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much.